Although they're not as majestic as galaxies or nebulae, star clusters can be excellent targets for both beginner and experienced astrophotographers, as they're bright in the sky and easy to identify. And tonight I'm going to be going after a popular star cluster in the Northern Hemisphere during the fall and winter that I photographed two years ago. And we'll see if I can make some new improvements this year. I got a head start on some new data a few nights ago, and tonight I'll be adding additional data to the collection. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I revisit what's been described as diamonds on a black velvet sky, Messier 45, also known as the Pleiades. My name is Kwesi Aqua, and welcome to the Astro Park. Also known as the Seven Sisters, Messier 45, or the Pleiades, are an open star cluster located in the constellation of Taurus at a distance of 444 light years away from Earth. The star cluster contains hot blue B type stars that have formed within the last 100 million years. A blue reflection nebula also surrounds the Pleiades, with the largest segments covering the stars of Maia and Merope. Galileo Galilei was the first astronomer to observe the Pleiades in 1610, and Charles Messier measured the position of the cluster and added it to his catalog as M45 in 1771. Astronomers estimate that the Pleiades will survive for another 250 million years, after which it will disperse due to the gravitational interactions with its galactic neighborhood. Tonight I'm going to be using some new gear to photograph M45. Introducing the newest member of my telescope family, I'll be using the Orion Eon 70 ED, a quadruplet astrograph refractor telescope. And for imaging, I'll be using my trusty one-shot color CMOS camera, the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. And as usual, this will all be sitting on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG mount. And to minimize that light pollution and maintain those natural colors, I'll be using my Optolong L-Pro broadband light pollution filter. So without further ado, let's head outside, take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the Pleiades. Hey everyone, so I just completed my polar alignment 
and I'm getting ready to slew over to the Pleiades to start imaging. But I want to take a quick moment to talk about my newest telescope. This is the Orion Eon 70 ED, a quadruplet astrograph refractor telescope. So there's four lens elements in this system, and it has a 70 millimeter aperture at f5, so it's a nice medium speed. And f5 gives it a 350 millimeter focal length. And with that focal length, you get a very nice wide field of view. So this telescope is ideal for those medium to large deep space objects. And once I get enough experience and take more photos with the telescope, I'll be doing an overview video to add to the My Telescope Family playlist. So be sure to look out for that later on in the future. So as you can see, it's a little bit chilly out tonight, but nevertheless, I'm excited and I hope you are too. So let's slew over to the Pleiades startup astrophotography tool, and let's collect some data. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm inside of APT, and my imaging session for the Pleiades is now currently in progress. You can see M45 right in the center of the frame. And one of the things that just blows my mind about looking at this image is that there's hundreds, maybe even thousands of stars. So you can see the bright ones right in the center, but out to the edge, those little pinpoints of light those are actual stars as well. So it just goes to show the power of the Orion Eon 70 ED. As its short focal length and wide field of view soaks in all of that light from all of those stars, which I think is really spectacular. So one issue I've been having recently in my imaging session, and this also occurred last Monday during my first imaging session, there's been a series of satellites and airplane streaks going through most of my frames. And the way that we can remove this is using what's known as Kappa Sigma clipping. So for those of you that don't know, Kappa Sigma clipping is an algorithm that's used in stacking software, such as Deep Sky Stacker, which is the program that I use to stack broadband images. And how it works is first the software will take the image that has the streak going through it. Then it will look at the next frame that's clean without any streaks in it. It will make a comparison and then the mechanics of the algorithm will basically eliminate the streak from the frame altogether so that you can use it in your stack. Now, unfortunately, if it's a large streak that's left behind by an airplane, you can still use Kappa Sigma clipping, but from my personal experience, it still leaves some residual streaks in the frame. So I just decide to throw those frames out altogether. But apart from that, everything seems to be going pretty smoothly so far. So I'm taking a series of two minute exposures just to make sure I don't overexpose the stars too much. And as usual, I'll be hoping to collect at least three hours or more of data tonight and add that to what I did last Monday. And once I do that, I should be in pretty good shape. So yeah, apart from that, everything is going pretty smoothly so far. And as usual, I'll just monitor the imaging session and I'll see how the night progresses.
Okay, so I want to give you all a quick update. It's a little after 1 a.m. and I slewed over to the Flame Nebula to do a focus check on Alnatec, the bright star on top of the nebula. Then I came back to the Pleiades to do another round of imaging. So I wanted to take a moment to talk about some additional facts about the Pleiades that you may not know about. As I mentioned earlier, the Pleiades contain hot B-type stars. Astronomers use this lettering system to determine the overall size of the star, as well as do some spectral analysis. These letters include O, B, A, F, G, K, and M type stars. O stars are the largest and M stars are the smallest. Our own sun is a G type star for a comparison. You can also tell a lot about a star's characteristics by its color. The younger stars tend to be hotter in temperature and have a white or blue color whereas the older stars are cooler in temperature and have an orange or red color. And the yellow stars, again, like our own sun, are somewhere in the middle of their lifespan. In Greek mythology, the Pleiades were the seven daughters of the Titan Atlas and the sea nymph Pleione, born on Mount Selene. It was said that after Atlas was forced to carry the heavens on his shoulders, Orion began to pursue the Pleiades. To protect them, Zeus transformed the Pleiades into doves and then into stars to comfort their father. The constellation of Orion still pursues the Pleiades across the night sky. And this pursuit is rather apparent in a time-lapse video of these two objects. Nihon de wa Pereyade su wa Subaru Toyobare Dome no jidosha kaisha wa predesu o kaisha norogo toshite shio shiteimas. So, the next time you find yourself on Jeopardy or at your local bar for your next trivia night, now you know a few interesting facts about the Pleiades. Do itashimashite. Hey everybody, so I completed my imaging session for tonight and I'm about to wrap things up. I was able to capture three hours and 10 minutes of data on the Pleiades tonight. And combining that with what I did last Monday, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get a really great image. And the Orion Eon 70 ED performed excellent tonight. So this will most likely be a mainstay in my telescope family for the foreseeable future. So all that's left on my checklist is to shoot my calibration frames. And I'll pack everything up, go home, and call it a night. So thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy the image of the Pleiades at the end of this video. And as always, until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies.
Exposure finished. Imaging plan finished.